is there a common denominator to the kinds of things that you have wanted to collect, own, put in your own library? Well, I think there's some innovators who, who were role models, and it's fun to you know, track how they did their work, the drafts of their manuscript, uh, the letters they wrote to people about you know, how they were thinking as they were going through the, their amazing work. So I've, you know, I've got a, some of that stuff, and you know, it's kind of fun. I let it go out and tour and hopefully in, inspire kids to think more about science and innovation. And this is uh, having to do with polio, Albert Sabin. Why this? Well, he's one of the great scientists. Salk and Sabin are the two people who invent each of the, the polio vaccines. And so, you know, his Did he invent a vaccine or an oral? It's an oral vaccine. Right. right. Okay. So the, the first one, the Salk, is a shot. Right. And, the, and his, the Sabin, is, right, uh, right. is drops. So both have played an important role. Yeah. I mean, this goes back to your, obviously, to your own interest in polio eradication. This, I assume, is Pasteur? Yeah, it's... Uh, Notes? You know, he's the one who did some of the first vaccine works, understanding that there were pathogens that made people sick. And so a boy came in with rabies, and he'd figured out how to come up with something that would cure that boy. It was considered a miracle. And so understanding that there were bacteria, and he was the one who really mm -hmm. figured that out. Mm -hmm. And finally, Edison. Uh, he's in the top rank of American inventors? Oh, absolutely. What he did with the light bulb and this whole system of generation that was the, the first electric lighting in New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, the number of things he had to get right, uh, and that sort of founded the whole uh, electrification of the country. Um, you know, he you know, competed with others, but a, a lot of it was his ingenuity. We're going to see something that I've looked forward to for a long time, and it is Leonardo da Vinci. How did you come to own this? So there was an auction held. Uh, I told him to Linda I wanted to buy a notebook. You know, first she wasn't <laughs> quite sure why that was such a big deal. Yes. Uh, you know, so I bought it at auction. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci was left-handed. You're left-handed. Lots of people. Barack Obama's left-handed. Uh, you read anything Steve into this? Steve Jobs is left-handed. Left yeah. Do you read anything into that? I don't know. Um, you know, there's a there's a little bit higher variance of of talent. High and low uh, for left-handers, but it's never, never been explained. Yeah. You don't have an explanation? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to move over here and take a look at Leonardo da Vinci. Now, why do you need a mirror to look at this? Uh, he used upside-down, backwards handwriting, and nobody really knows why. Uh, you know, one theory is that because he was left-handed, this avoids the ink smearing. Uh, uh, yeah. The other is that he thought maybe somebody would find the notebooks but it's hard to believe that that, you know, if somebody's smart enough to benefit yeah. from these notebooks, that they wouldn't figure out the, uh, the mirror, mirror writing that, that he happened yeah. to use.